Hi, my name is Arjun and I'm from the band Rang. I do vocals, I write lyrics and I play a little bit of acoustic guitar. And you're watching Rhythm Nation TV. We used to have this television show that's playing uh, on Indian TV when I was about two years old. Uh, it's a show called the Mahabharata, which is based off the epic. Uh, there used to be a few verses and proses and stuff which are sung out at the start. So when I was about one and a half, two years old, when I didn't really speak much, there was something interesting which used to happen where I used to sing along with each line of what you call the shloka. And uh, my mom tells me today that at that age, it was a difficult thing to associate with, which is where she realized that my bond and love for music and anything to do with using the voice, using elements and notes and things from uh, around you, all of the influences around you, it, uh, it just led to a common discovery through music and uh, trying to interact with life through music. So it, it's always been there from a very, very young age. and. Uh, it's, it's something that's running through my family as well, like everybody, my dad sings a little bit, everyone's a great, I mean, I would not call them bathroom singers, but everyone's quite passionate about their music, every family gathering would have a bunch of people sitting together and singing, so uh, it's been something that's always been a part of life from a very young age. It's primarily out of choice that uh, I, I think the first instrument known to man was the human voice. And there's something about it which you can explore different territories which you really can't explore necessarily within the scope of just an instrument. Now that's not to say that I don't enjoy playing the guitar, it's not to say that I don't enjoy uh, composing off a keyboard. But uh, my primary discipline is the voice because that's something that I'm able to work on maybe 24-7. Every single conversation that you have, there's a certain pitch, a certain prose to the way you speak about things. Uh, everything can be turned into music. You have uh, rhythm and progression, rap, effectively. So the voice is a medium which has the ability to express a multitude of genres. And I find that it's probably the one instrument that's not limited by any form of music. So it's exciting for me, but I love every kind of instrument because it's respect to anyone who can play any sort of instrument. Whether you're good, bad, the point is you're connecting with music and that in itself is something that people resonate with. When I joined uh, my college, I would say that music was always a hobby until then. Although I had definitely spent a lot of hours on stage performing with school choirs, into school competitions, I'd done all of that, but it was something where it felt like something I enjoyed. It was effortless for me to just be either making music or be a part of delivering a performance which involved a lot of music. So suddenly when I, I met these wonderful brothers of mine from the band Rung, it, it was somewhere towards the second half of college and uh, we did this, this first show which we weren't called Rang back then, we were called something else but it wasn't the same setup either but uh, the three original members of the band that is myself, Ajay who you met earlier, we had Ronit, all of us were part of the same college and when we played together it, it was a show where it was possibly the first time I actually sang in college and that was funny because I was always singing throughout my school uh, career but in college I pursued different things, I pursued more administrative roles, pursued more of uh, entrepreneurial roles and suddenly this one gig comes along where we perform together and there was this instant connection between the three of us, a few more of us and when this band was formed, the first original that uh, came to us was something that happened uh, where I kind of wrote out the song, uh, it's, it's a story that my bandmates still refuse to get behind but uh, it, it does happen, I know a lot of writers experience this, where you, you have your pen and paper on you and it's six minutes later you're staring down, the words are yours but you don't remember writing them. Uh, so that was one of the first things that happened and the song that we wrote was a song called Rang, which stands for colour in Hindi, uh, which is our national language and uh, one original which kind of bound all of us together was this song. So that was a moment where I felt like, you know what, this is something that came to me naturally and 
I enjoy making music with these guys. So that was possibly one of my first steps towards being professional or a professional journey towards music. Ah, it was great. It was it was obviously a wonderful and exhilarating feeling. Not from the perspective of the fact that hey, this is you know this is going to get some traction. People are going to know me. People are going to know what our band does. I don't think that any of us really care about that part of it. Yes, we want you to know about us, not because of the fact that hey, we've seen them 15 times on television, but the first feeling and. That, that, that we all experienced, I can speak for the band as well, is that we were just happy that people are getting to hear our work because uh, if you want to be an artist today, you've got to believe in the fact that the stuff that you're making is something that a lot of people will connect. It doesn't matter what age, caste, creed, uh, we're talking about things that you and I can speak about. But more importantly, uh, I felt happy that an ideology that we had put down was being heard by a bunch of people across the radio. Uh, when our first music video broke on television, it was, it was a proud moment for all of us. But that feeling still stands today where we're still primarily happy about the fact that we're just being heard. And possibly that starts the journey towards being understood. Definitely, I, I work on The Voice on a daily basis because uh, I also do sessions. Uh, I also try out my hand as a voiceover artist. So it's, it's something where it doesn't stop because it's with you all the time. It's not like carrying a guitar around. Uh, that being said, I try and get in, you got to get in at least, you got to think of it, if, if you're looking at music as a profession, you cannot sit down and sit back and think that talent will take you uh, places. Talent takes you to the first few steps. After that, it's always going to be about the attitude and personality you exude. You've got to practice every day. You've got to keep doing something for a long amount of time for you to be that good at it, that people can look up to you and follow your work for it. So that's something that's not lost upon us. Although I feel like with the effort of uh, trying to make a living off music and then you know you have the entire passion side of it, I think between those two, I do manage to get quite a few hours in on my instrument playing as well. So. It works, but uh, it's never enough, so you can just keep getting better. Oh, that's, uh, this is an interesting story. I don't think I told this to the band as well. I was uh, in my preschool, what they call lower kindergarten out here. Uh, and I was playing the lead in a musical for Old MacDonald. And I was playing Old MacDonald. And uh, incidentally, I realized that now that I was what, four, three, five, I'm not sure how old, how old are you when you're in kindergarten, I don't remember, but it was barely a few years old and you have a bunch of uh, about 20, 30 students on stage waiting for you to deliver your lines, to sing them out, to cue them, to do all of that. And in hindsight, I, I think that was pretty cool to pull off for the first performance. It was very good to do that. And I hope that I can replicate some of that today because it doesn't seem to be the case. That, that five-year-old version of me is a lot cooler, much cooler. I've uh, always been a big believer of the fact that a lot of the birthplace of music comes from this side of the world. You have a country where you have not just one house of classical music, you have two houses of classical music. You have Hindustani music and you have Carnatic music as well. So a lot of the work that you get to hear in mainstream cinema, not necessarily what you hear today in Bollywood, but I am from a state down to the southern half of the country called Kerala. It's also known as God's own country, incidentally. Uh, and out there you have a very eroded uh, film industry. They are excellent and they pursue their art for what it is. And art is what has made it to the commercial stream as well for them. So I was lucky that a lot of the music that I heard up front was, if I'm listening to my grandparents play stuff, it was either from the classical garanas music 
or it was a Malayalam film song where you have singers like uh, Dr. K.J. Yeshudas who's regarded as one of the best Carnatic singers across the world. So that was a lot of the early stuff that I heard when I was a kid. But aside from that, my dad has heard a lot of Hindi music. And that was a time in the 70s where you have th these composers like uh, Mr. Radhi Berman. Uh, they were pulling off some wonderful music. They were creating some great stuff, which is even, you know, it's to the test of time. Even today, people want to go back to that as opposed to a lot of stuff that's playing out there today. Uh, so. It's, it's stuff that grew on me, it's stuff that I internalized very young. Uh, I, I don't think that today I would have listened to a lot of that music personally because once you start making music, your perception of what you consume as well is slightly different. But I'm always going to be grateful for the fact that I heard a lot of the stuff that my dad used to listen to. And I have an elder brother who's about five years older than me. So my influence is also come somewhere blended with his. and. Uh, I think right from the Beatles to uh, you know what you have playing today, you have a lot of the porcupine tree uh, craziness happening about six, seven years ago. But lately, I'm into electronic music, and every day you're just finding new uh, artists to enjoy, explore, and learn from. It's never easy to choose one album. Because if you have one album to choose from, then you know it's it's music. You can't sit down and it's not like you can have one favorite child or uh, you, because everything becomes yours. I think if someone puts out a piece of music, when you listen to it as a, as, uh, as a listener, you are making that music your own because you're saying, hey, yes, that is something I have thought about. It's my thought. He's managed to put it out there. Now this is my song. So when you look at it that way, I think something that had a big impact on me in terms of what an artist can do and what they end up doing uh, when they enter the system or they get out there. Uh, one of the biggest learnings I got was uh, surprisingly from a Coldplay album. It wasn't the Coldplay that you know today. It was something that they put out. It was a Blue Room EP which they had released before their first major album. It had a few songs which people haven't really heard today as well. And I thought that was some of the best writing that Chris Martin has done. And uh, it, it embodied a lot of the good stuff of the Beatles. It took a progressive new sound which the next generation could listen to. It had elements which uh, brought in the entire Floydian era of music. It, it had a lot of stuff going for it. But those three, four songs, more importantly, made a lot of sense lyrically. They were beautiful. All of that stuff really hit me hard. It, it worked for me even more because of the stuff that Coldplay has put out today. Maybe I don't primarily connect with it uh, necessarily. A lot of people, a lot of diehard Coldplay fans of the past feel that they've gone a little soft, but this was them being soft as well. But there was something about it which had a different kind of depth to the writing. So that's one album that I'd recommend to anyone. Original music has been something that has come about for the last eight eight to nine years. I would say we have, Rang was the first journey of making an original original for me. I did do some stuff in school as well, but I would say that the first time I really sat out, thought of a song right from, you know, you, you look at songwriting from the perspective of uh, not just, hey, you got a verse, chorus, second verse, chorus, bridge final chorus. You know, that's like the cliche, the standard template which everyone takes up, but you got to get through that phase to understand what more you can do. And that journey started for me with this band as well. And that was about eight, nine years ago. Music doesn't really go without thought, in my opinion. I feel like even if you're listening to an instrumental band, when the instrumental player is making a certain verse, he's writing down a certain kind of part, he's thinking about something. There's a certain emotion that he wants you to experience when he's putting that down. So I believe that music is something that does not ever come bereft of ideology, which is why a lot of the stuff that's happening today may or may not be lost upon everyone because we have progressively moved to a place where everyone wants to relax and unwind. But I believe that music has always been a tool which confirms cultures, defines cultures, and also becomes a timestamp of the era that you live in. It's something that always goes with ideology. It's something that never comes without thought. 
if it does come out there and get successful then you know you have a problem when you know as the great Dave Grohl said you have a problem when the biggest song in your world right now is about somebody's butt then you know you have a problem going about but I feel like uh, emotion is something that stirs within you when you've understood what someone said and I feel like we're getting into a zone now where probably in the next few years if, if things go the way they are if the balance tilts towards the side of hey music is entertainment there's nothing wrong with that but you got to realize that music first is a tool of cultural influence change and also you know documenting for future generations what you and what your time stood for the first thing that uh, i'm i'm going to talk on behalf of uh, a lot of people I work with but these primarily would be thoughts which I feel like uh, these are my methods of trying to go about it if I have to be personal about it I would say that the first thing that I look at when approaching any song is what exactly are you trying to say with it what do you want your audience member to feel if someone's listening to it are they going to be stationary when they're listening to it do you want them to move is there a certain pulse a certain groove that you want them to feel that automatically defines what zone you want to take your track into once you figure that out as well if it's an idea that requires you to rush your audience if it's an idea that requires them to be laid back if it's an idea that requires them to be up on their feet jumping bouncing going crazy screaming that automatically defines how heavy your track needs to be how light it needs to be how many words do you use do you do you write 15 paragraphs do you cut it down to just three lines a song could be anything and and if it starts off with a very strong uh, objective on what exactly you're trying to define and achieve, it'll be great. That being said, that's one style of approaching, and that's one way of approaching it, where you define the goal and then head towards that. But sometimes you've got to let the music take you towards that goal and end up un discovering and uh, you know, uncovering rather that particular idea which you yourself did not know you could think of. And that journey is pretty explorative as well. That generally happens when you're sitting down, you pick up an instrument, and you just let the music flow because uh, in India we have this very strong uh, philosophy on the fact that uh, it, it helps keep your ego in check because you're not necessarily just a musician you're also what you call a vessel of sorts because you're not a person who's creating all of this you say whatever that divine force is that you believe in somewhere it channels itself through you and you have that special ability to just serve as a vessel to put that music out so You've got to take that side of it as well when you're approaching a song and let the music flow through you. So how you mix and match and marry these two together is what would generally end up getting you a great song. There's no template to it, but that's what it comes down to. A good songwriter would know how to play between these two fields, in my opinion. I'm kind of still waiting for that moment. <laughs> But uh, you, you've got to understand that it's never going to, you know, you feel validated when, of course, different people would argue that the first payout that you get for doing a gig or for creating a track for someone or, hey, you wrote lyrics for somebody and they can, they said that, hey, I liked it and I'm going to use it in a song and here's, you know, here's uh, so-and-so monies for it. That's generally the moment that serves as validation for everybody. Uh, on a personal basis, for me, I think when you walk onto stage and you have a good bunch of people, you have thousands of people singing along with you words that you guys have put down as a group, singing along tunes that you've created as a group, that's when you really feel like, hey, we started something. People are connecting to this. And if people are connecting to it, it means that we must be doing something right or uh, something new is getting established and created as well. So. I think one of the first few rung shows that we did when we, we played to these college audiences and suddenly they started giving us these requests and the requests weren't for cover songs. The requests were for some of the originals which we had released, very low quality originals if I may add. Those were about five, seven years ago when you know bands just figure out, you plug in play, you figure out, put out your first recording but that connected with people instantly and for me that immediately uh, told me that this band needs to 
be making more music. It's been a very long and interesting journey for this band because we've had a bunch of lineup changes which have kind of held us back in terms of timelines. But uh, that moment when we went up on stage and they asked us for not just one, two, they asked us for three of our originals. They requested for it. They were screaming out the name of the song and when we did the song, they just sang along. That's when you feel like, hey, okay, you're onto something. I wouldn't use the word validation, but I would say that it did validate the fact that we are on the right path. See, you have a left hand and you have a right hand. You can't, you can't say that, you know, hey, I like my left hand more. But you will think that I am more right-handed uh, than left-handed. But I, I don't think there's a way I can differentiate between the two because if you're creating something, the whole idea is if you want to create something for doing it live, then you're not going to have more fun than performing something live. But that being said, the creative process becomes fun as well to try and create something which you will definitely enjoy. Sorry. The creative process becomes even more fun as well because it, it's about defining something that you will enjoy when you go up on stage and do that live. So it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, just being a punter for some time, just speculating that, hey, you know what, when this moment comes up in this song, I know I'm going to try and do this and you do this and you come and whack me across the head at that time and it's going to bang, it's going to be a great pop from the crowd. It's, it's a lot of fun when you're creating a track, if you can visualize those things happening with your crowd because that means you're also able to get the pulse of the audiences before you've met them or you're able to anticipate what's going to happen. So it's a lot of fun to be performing live but there's also a lot of fun in trying to create something which you know for sure you'll enjoy live. The first time this band went up to perform live as Rang was uh, for this festival called Celebrate Bandra. Bandra is this, uh, it's the start of the suburbs of uh, Mumbai. And it was something where, uh, it was also incidentally the gig where we'd already penned down our first original. That song too was called Rang, which stands for colour. And uh, it, it, we had an original that just bound us together. So that was extremely special because you know what? It was the first time we went up on stage as that band. And it was the first few performances that we had all done uh, collectively with other musicians. And uh, you know, you have lyric stands and you have these cell phones on airplane mode with lyrics scribbled down on them. And you literally have verses which you've written out maybe an hour before you went up on stage and people are looking at each other to remember, oh yeah, it was, E minor, A minor, you know, you're just figuring out what chords were happening and you get through that first performance and frankly for me when we got off stage that day I thought we did something special because it wasn't easy. We had literally finished up the song on the day of that performance and we were really driven because uh, the gig was getting a good amount of publicity and uh, we could have used some of that publicity to just get the word out there that hey we are also starting off as a band and uh, it's it was very, very memorable that it was our first gig and we performed our first original at our first gig. With respect to this band, it's, it's had a bit of uh, misfortune as well because we've always been lucky about the fact that we've always had wonderful musicians in the band. So it's really helped develop the entire sound and ethos and the entire tonality, the production value, all of that stuff that the band has. It's something that has kept evolving. Every year you would get a different version of this band, but it's always been a new and improved version. What's ended up happening though in the process is across the last eight years that the band has had, we've had about four lineup changes with, uh, you know, we're actually a bunch of you know, eight, nine friends who are really close, all of us are musicians and everyone's played in this band rung at some point in time. We keep that group going. But the one thing that we never really got around to doing was an album that was promised about two and a half years ago. We were ready for that album back then. Uh, and in hindsight, maybe we weren't because uh, we had a couple of lineup changes. The lead guitarist left to pursue music in Canada and uh, we suddenly had a new lead guitarist. Then we underwent a structural change where uh, we are a band which has two lead vocalists where uh, both of us used to play guitar, he used to play electric guitar, I used to play acoustic guitar and somewhere we all felt like uh, the other vocalist would be a little more uh, relieved if he's uh, 
taken off guitar duties and it did, it worked. So we brought on one more member where we became a six member band. So in terms of the upcoming projects which are there, uh, I would say that the one and only thing that we are entirely focused on right now is we have about 15 original songs which we've developed over the last few years. I would say eight or seven of those have come in today's times where it's happened in the last one and a half, two years, which we're looking to put out as an album. But we have an entire bunch of stuff which is released content, I would say, but we're going to re-release them with the updated sound of the band. So this band has a lot of content coming out in the next few months. As a vocalist, I, I generally like uh, a good sound check. I think everybody loves a good sound check. But you know, when you when you feel the vibe of the place, when you feel the sound of the place, what a lot of bands miss in this country is the entire uh, entity of how the the value of production that you need with respect to the way something sounds. If you play, however good your material is, I feel like in terms of a ritual, it's it's something that stays with me that I want to make sure I've tested this sound out. Am I comfortable with the way? Uh, am I able to belt when I have to? Am I able to hear myself properly? Am I able to hear the bass player properly? Am I able to hear the lead guitarist properly? The other vocalists, both of us do a bunch of uh, things as well when, before we go up. There are these uh, random songs which start coming up and we end up harmonizing to them together. And uh, that's, that's part of the ritual, you know, there's a, there's a vocal handshake which happens with the other vocalists and then we all have this huddle which we do before we go up to be one body and one mind when we go up there. Well, it's surprising. Uh, we, we've made a conscious decision to make music in Hindi. And it's not because uh, a lot of us listen to music which is uh, not in this language, but the primary reason that we're looking to do this in this language is because the, the number of fans that you discover across this country, it's, it's unbelievable the musical potential of this country with respect to the kind of music we're looking to make. It's absolutely untapped and unexplored. Because there have been so many great legendary players before this, but it's uh, something that every place we go to, we discover that you have this whole bunch of new audiences who've heard your stuff before. You might think they've not, but they've heard it. Incidentally, when we went to Rajasthan, we'd gone to Rajasthan to play a gig. Now, we've never played in that side of the country at that point in time. We'd never done that. And when we went there and we discovered that there were three people uh, who had heard our stuff before. There were a bunch of people who had ridden down from bikes from Ahmedabad, which is the western side of the country, and they'd come up to Rajasthan. So we found fans in completely unexpected places. It's been good. The worst gig that we had, again, had to do with the sound as well. And couple that with a couple of blackouts in terms of uh, you know, the lyrics weren't happening, so we, we stepped up and we started improvising, we started filling out and some other stuff and, you know, you have a bad gig once in a while and I, I think, uh, I wouldn't call it the worst, we, we've not really had too many bad gigs, but some of the worst gigs have always been because of the sound, because you always end up forgetting lyrics on stage. That's, that's, I think anyone who's performed for 40 years as well, there would be this one occasion where, hey, I messed up this word or did not do this line. So I don't really blame the other vocalists for having had a bad day, but uh, that, that was definitely one of the gigs that we don't like remembering too fondly. Let's put it that way. I would say I'm going to toss up between two gigs. We've had a lot of gigs which are going to make it to that list, but for me personally, there were two gigs which did a lot. One was a gig where our uh, Ronit, who was the other vocalist, uh, he wasn't available for that gig and we went down to perform at Rajasthan. So this is the first time that we were doing it as a one vocalist band where you have everybody else chipping in with the harmonies and the backing but it wasn't it was a lot more additional responsibility and added weight on me uh, and I would say we scraped through we pulled through we managed the gig but that gig was special not for any other reason it was because it was in the middle of nowhere in the desert uh, in the night sky you have lesser power but you have 
just a good number of 200, 150 people who have made it to the middle of the desert just to watch you play under the moonlight. So that was a very special gig. Another gig that we really did well was uh, there were these two, three college gigs where people just went crazy. It, it was madness because when you see the crowd throwing that kind of energy at you, suddenly you transform into someone you may not recognize yourself. You let go of all things and suddenly you're holding a note when you're jumping up four feet in the air. And hey, I tried that at practice, that never happened. But suddenly when you have this energy coming at you from the crowd, you stay on top of that and it was really helpful. So those two gigs somewhere found, found a lot of great memories for me. We are a band that's, we've been close friends for a decade now. It's, it's a different kind of connect. And when you're going up there with your brothers, when you're going on the road with your brothers, it's, it's always going to be fun games. You know, people are going to be pulling pranks from one another. Someone falls asleep. He's bound to wake up with toothpaste on his face. So it's the, the, the company is, you know, really important. Uh, I would say that if, if this band has ever hit the road, it's always been about, you know, pulling off a great gig. And after that, we try not to remember the rest of the night because we try and make it a point to have a good time. We try and uh, make sure that we're enjoying this process. So these are some of the essential things for me. If you're taking a road trip, it's going to be about having fun because that's what's going to help you make great music as well. A lot of people would argue that it's obviously going to be about making this a source of living, a source of income for you. But if you do something, you work hard, if, if you're willing to put in those long hours, talent is definitely something that, you know, that's not something which you can do without. If you're not going to be talented, then you put in one million hours of effort as well. You will still fall short of a lot of people who do have the talent because you have to, if you want to make it in the field of music, I believe it's going to be a combination of not just it's about going to be about ability, but translating that ability with that amount of dedication, hard work and effort to get through. And the biggest challenge is for people to be able to combine the two, because a lot of people either focus on this or a lot of people focus on the other. But you have to keep a dualistic perspective in having a single focus via these two mechanisms of harnessing your talent, building that out, but doing it with this tremendous amount of effort which you will have to put in. And I think that is going to be the biggest challenge because you make it through, I think, uh, one, two, three years, if you get through and you survive, you generally end up making a decent amount of money where, you know, you will get through the month where uh, people, I, I know people, myself included, I think I get by. I wouldn't say that it's uh, a wonderful living and all of that stuff. But then there comes a time where suddenly your music booms. You always have that great dream where you, everybody wants to be a rock star. Everybody wants to be known across the world. But uh, that's not what you should get into this for. If you love doing this for the music, you will end up getting the, that, those 20 minutes of fame, those 20 years of fame, whatever you want. Don't do it for that. I think the biggest challenge is going to be to construct a solid, stable mindset and approach this as a creative entrepreneur. Don't approach this. A lot of people get lost to the, hey man, I want to feel the music, man. That's a good way to go. You're not going to go very far beyond a point because we're not living in an era anymore where something can become a trend overnight. You've got to break through hours and hours and hours of content that's online, for someone to discover one video of yours, they got to get through one million videos to get there. So it's, it's going to be very rare that you, you know, break the trend. I'm, I'm not talking about being viral. I'm talking about setting a trend. Nirvana, for example, if Nirvana were to come about today and that kind of music didn't exist, God forbid, people might kill me for saying this, but I think that things might work very differently. I don't think anyone with an educated opinion about music would necessarily feel otherwise because when they broke out back then, they took the world by, they took the bull by its horns and they just changed the way things are because they had that kind of belief. Of course, the writing, the talent, all of that was different, but I think they worked their, their butts off and they got to where they had to. They were able to break through that because they could break through a slightly lesser clutter-free world, they would still obviously thrive today because, you know, greatness is greatness. But I think you've got to approach things very differently today. You've got to push yourself to that kind of quality and effort where 
it's not going to be about hey this will guaranteed get you out there but if that opportunity hits you you need to be that good enough you need to be at that level with your material and what you do at least strive to be at that material and level where if the world gives you an opportunity you're not just ready to seize it you're ready to capitalize on it and that is a tremendous amount of thinking a lot of time effort and it is a challenge for anyone getting into it but hey you know there's nothing that beats you if you love what you do and i think everyone who's getting into music should love what they do i think it's it's too early to talk off a music career because i was doing this uh, i i'm about 27 28 years old right now and everyone after you finish college you get a job you get working so i was doing all of that i used to put in about 12 to 13 hours a day every day at my office it was an intense work process but i used to still follow my passion which is jam with rang jam with the band learn more about music keep understanding and keep growing keep getting better as a performer all that kept happening but it's only about 3 years ago that i took the jump of quitting my job and turning this into a full time profession i do rang right now i uh i'm also a music producer i compose for people i also write lyrics so all of those journeys are things which has started off about 3 years ago so i would say it's a very 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 young and nascent time in my career right now but so far the reception's been interesting and one of the projects that i'm most excited about is rang because it's it's home and i would say rang has been successful because even though we've gone kind of underground over the last couple of years because we want to get the line up right we want to write out the album properly there has always been this unsaid word of respect for the band where when people count the best hindi bands uh, coming out hindi as in you have indie as a genre and you combine that with hindi as a language and you have this new thing called hindi h i n d i e which we kind of started off about 3 4 years ago there are a lot of bands who are using it today but uh, it's uh, it's it's something which uh, excites me to no other respect where i feel like rang has achieved something because even in spite of not putting out too much in the last few years people have still just been waiting saying that hey when that album does come out i'm going to be one of the first people to buy it so just looking forward to that get into it for the right reasons don't get into it because hey if that guy had a viral video so i can become a musician a viral video does not make you a musician stuff that you see on the internet does not make you a musician a musician is someone who understands the art it's a science it's a journey it's discovery it's a responsibility it's a lot of things it's not just about going up on stage and having 10000 screaming fans because of course that's what it ends up at but you know you need to earn that spot as well i feel like a lot of bands uh, a lot of new people get into music for uh, thinking that hey you know what i'm passionate about music yes you might be passionate about music but you need to take a good long hard look at yourself and understand that hey can i really contribute to this can i really get better at what i do is there a longer path for me because if you're doing it to get in for 2 years make your money and get out you're doing a lot more damage to the rest of us who probably are trying to learn improve keep getting better all of that stuff so i would say that if someone's trying to get into this field it's a candid opinion when i say that i think with great power comes great responsibility that holds true out here because if you're getting into music you're getting into any form of uh, art which is being consumed by people it's not just going to be about the entertainment if you want to get in for the entertainment do it but make sure that you define and distinguish and separate your efforts from saying that hey i would like to win a grammy for the country that's not something that you put out there if your music does not have that kind of value for it uh so i would say that always get into it for the right reasons but if you're getting into it it's 24 hours of work 365 days a year because you never stop thinking you never stop making music so it's not about the chicks it's not about the groupies it's not about the audiences it's not about all that alone of course all of that comes into play but uh, it's something that comes in at the other end of the tunnel and you need to be able to take that journey through the dark so get into it for the right reasons is all i'd say always